there's absolutely nothing in the United States Constitution that says the Supreme Court of the United States can only have nine justices. In fact, it hasn't always been nine justices. It changed six times before finally settling at the number nine in 1869. There have only been 17 chief justices and 103 associate justices since the formation of the Supreme Court in 1790. That means a group of about 115 people have been making major decisions with massive implications for our entire country for about 232 years. And if the draft opinion from Justice Samuel Alito is to be believed, five are about to make another decision with life and death implications. The right to choose may no longer be on the table for millions of Americans. And while we wait for the official opinion to be handed down in just a few months, congressional Democrats are trying to figure out their next steps to save reproductive rights. Senate Majority Leader Schumer says he's planning a vote on a bill to protect abortion rights next week. But as Axios puts, points out, that is all but doomed with Republicans likely to block it. We all know with the filibuster being upheld, there are really not many options for Congress to try to stop the Supreme Court from issuing this decision. Which is why some House Democrats are renewing their calls yet again to expand the Supreme Court, arguably because it may be the only option left. New polling from Politico and Morning Consult shows voters have some feelings about changes to the court. 67% of those polled approve of adding term limits for justices. And 44% of voters in the same poll either strongly approve or somewhat approve of expanding the number of justices on the Supreme Court. Joining me now to discuss is Congressman Mondaire Jones of New York. He is one of several Democrats that are pushing for an expansion of the Supreme Court. Thank you so much for being here, Congressman. As the New York Times notes in this article back in 2020 when Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away, the idea of expanding the court is increasingly popular among progressives, but faces roadblocks among members of both parties. Congressman, what's the real chance that the number of SCOTUS justices can actually be changed? Well, Katie, it's great to be with you, and I wish I were here under better circumstances. Mm. Uh, but the fact is, American public opinion oftentimes is ahead of where members of Congress ought to be. And so we are building a movement. Uh, I introduced the Judiciary Act of 2021 on April 15th of last year with some colleagues, including the chair of the Judiciary Committee and the chair of the Subcommittee on Courts, because I knew the direction in which the Supreme Court's conservative majority was headed. And so since that time, and certainly this week, we've picked up steam. Uh, several people have joined as co-sponsors of the Judiciary Act. And so it's not going to happen overnight that we add four justices to the Supreme Court of the United States, but it will happen. The question is, will it be too late? And I remain optimistic that my colleagues in the House and in the Senate, where we've got even more work to do, will summon the courage to do the only thing that will ensure that we continue to have fundamental rights moving forward. But it appears, as time goes on, more House Democrats are voicing their support for court expansion, including Congressman Adam Schiff, who called to expand the court this week. You said Schiff is a leader in the fight to defend our democracy, and it's a big deal that he's joining the movement. Are you waiting, though, for any of your other colleagues in particular to support this movement? Because what are the next steps to be able to galvanize the support you're talking about in the House and possibly even the Senate? Well, I don't want to call anyone in particular out. You can just go to the website uh, and see who has signed on and who hasn't. Uh, but I, I think if you're talking about the need to protect reproductive rights in this country, to say nothing of the need for a democracy moving forward, recognizing that it has been the Supreme Court's conservative majority that has dismantled the Voting Rights Act, the greatest legis legislative achievement of the civil rights movement. I don't see how you can not support adding seats to the Supreme Court. And thank you for making the observation that the size of the Supreme Court has changed a total of seven times before in our nation's history. This is not a novel concept. The question is whether Congress will rise to the occasion, in particular, given unanimous GOP opposition to fundamental rights like abortion and like the right to vote. The question is whether Democrats in particular will do that which is required 
to save our democracy, to save the right to an abortion, and to protect so many other fundamental rights that Justice Alito's draft opinion lists as also being in peril now moving forward. Congressman, there is this language thinking that maybe this is the only way and the only last option to be able to protect certain critical rights. But isn't it a chicken and the egg problem, if you think about it? Shouldn't you be focusing your energy and time on perhaps voting rights, the ability to be able to vote people into office that are like-minded, like you, that are progressive, that want to make sure that certain rights are protected and, and, and are saved, uh, versus spending the time, you know, advocating for expanding SCOTUS when maybe it's just not going to be feasible? Look, we can do both things, and I've been a leader in the fight to save our democracy and to protect the right to vote. But, Katie, check this out. I, you know, the Voting Rights Act was reauthorized unanimously in the Senate in 2006 and nearly unanimously in the House, and an unaccountable Supreme Court majority, less conservative, actually, than the one that currently exists, given the additions in recent years, still struck down that legislatively enacted statute called the Voting Rights Act. So it's not enough for Congress to pass laws other than a law that would finally add four seats to the Supreme Court of the United States and finally restore balance and sanity to that institution. I want to read a tweet of yours about Chief Justice John Roberts calling the leak of this Supreme Court draft opinion a, quote, egregious breach of trust. You wrote, John Roberts is silent when Clarence Thomas votes to cover up the insurrection his wife helped plan, but loud as hell when someone reveals to the American public that his court is about to destroy a fundamental right. What a fraud. Uh, I am definitely a very loud critic of the fact that there has been zero investigation into Clarence Thomas's glaring conflicts of interest. But expanding the court won't necessarily deal with this problem, Congressman. What would you say to the Chief Justice today to be able to fix that particular issue of the conflict of interest? Well, as a member of the Judiciary Committee uh, and as someone who has co-authored legislation that would finally enact a binding code of ethics and a mechanism to force to compel the recusal of sitting justices of the Supreme Court, I know that we've got to have an all-hands-on-deck approach to dealing with this rogue partisan majority. Uh, Justice Roberts has said that the Supreme Court can self-regulate. Well, we've seen that that's simply not true. Uh, we've got one sitting Supreme Court justice whose wife has been shown to have been planning the insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th, and otherwise the attempt to overthrow that free and fair presidential election from 2020. And rather than recuse himself, which is what the existing recusal statute requires, but again, unfortunately, there's no enforcement mechanism, Justice Clarence Thomas was the lone dissenting vote in an eight-to-one opinion that compelled the production of documents of evidence to the January 6th Select Committee, Do a production of documents and evidence that could well have included those text messages between his wife, Jenny Thomas, and Mark Meadows. Thank God we got that evidence anyway. But it says a lot that the guy who should have recused himself was then putting himself in the position of being the only dissenting vote in that decision. Well, Congressman Mondaire Jones, if you have and you get what you're looking for, we may end up having more than nine SCOTUS justices. We're going to keep a very close eye on your efforts, but we thank you for your time and your insight today. Thank you so much.